The Sal KDA Titan timepiece is the first NFT watch ever created. These one-of-a-kind timepieces paired with their NFT authentication provide a revolutionary method to fight back against the counterfeit watch industry. Along with the paired NFT authenticity comes maintenance and history records stored on the Kadena blockchain. Finally, this is the perfect gift to pass down to one of your sons or daughters who take up that crypto family mantle. Check out the Sal KDA Titan timepiece down below in today's video description. What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, I have a guest and I'd like to welcome Alex from the Flux Proof of Work team. How's it going, Alex? Great, great. What about yourself? I'm doing awesome. So I'm excited to have Alex on the channel here, guys. First time he's been on the channel. We've had uh, Daniel Keller from the Flux team here before. Uh, we'll have some other guests here in the future from their team. But Alex is specifically coming to us to talk about proof of useful work. So Alex, are you ready to dive in? Yeah, let's go. Awesome. So at a high level, you know, uh, my community is very much home GPU miners. So to them at a high level, what is this flux proof of useful work? Uh, the best way that you can explain it to GPU miners. So I'll just give an example of what my, mm -hmm. uh, what my, where I come from and mm -hmm. basically what my use case is. So basically come from the research, uh, well, research, uh, from my university and basically what proof of use work was for me, uh, at that point is basically we invested a lot of hardware, uh, had a lot of money into hardware and basically have these running for basically. 4.7% over the course of a year. So that's wow. basically ba super little usage for what we yeah. invest in. And those are like $60,000 rigs. And we value these over five years to be, uh, well, basically calculate the depreciation because over five or seven years, basically these GPUs are no longer very useful mm -hmm. for AI, uh, for our main use case at university at least. So basically uh, what I had in mind uh, at first, the first iteration is basically how could we make better use of these resources? And the best okay. way I like to illustrate this is basically uh, using the analogy of a car, right? We, we all buy a car because it's useful for us at a certain time of the day, but what do we really do with it? 95% of the time, it's just sitting in the parking lot unless you drive all day and you're a taxi driver. Yep. And when you use it, you're maybe the only one in it, or maybe you're sharing it with someone else, but you got realistically five people that you can carry with you. Um, so how would you make better use of that car, right? Mm. We can say the same about our hardware, basically. So you can either rent it or carpool with it. And that's my approach of proof of use of work, basically, from the academic standpoint. Uh, and then I approached the team uh, a year and a half ago, and basically, uh, that's how we got started on the GPU part of things. Wow. Yeah, that analogy is awesome, by the way. I have not heard that regarding proof of useful work yet, but I feel like that's a great avenue to go. It's like putting to work these cars or this hardware, this compute, the resources that is just sitting idle, not doing anything older hardware, newer hardware, whatever it is. So um, very well explained. So thank you. So I think that'll definitely help my community when it comes to like, hey, I'm an everyday, everyday GPU miner. How exactly does this work? So from your experience, now you've been working with some things behind the scenes and stuff like that too. What are the ideal customers on the forefront for proof of useful work with Flux? Like where would this be beneficial? What industries or what customers? I'd, I'd say there's, everyone is at some point a customer for GPU usage because you either do gaming, you either do rendering, every single use case that you have to use a GPU for it, there's a customer for it basically. You're basically providing useful services to people. Uh, it can be a huge enterprise or it can be an indiv individual that don't want to go out and buy a 4090 to run their latest games, AAA <laughs> games and so on, right? Uh, I happen to have these, uh, I bought two GPUs, two 2080 in 2019 or 2020. Those were brand new for AI, uh, create memory. And after my thesis, I had no use whatsoever for them. And that's why <laughs> I came to Flux afterwards. I found Flux and I started mining with those cards. And turns out it was the best for the, uh, mining flux. Um, so the ideal use case, I'd say it depends really on the service you want to run. Um, that keep in mind that if you want to provide a service through proof of use of work, you'd have to target towards the segment of basically customers you're going to, mm -hmm. well, 
if, if you want to rent it out specifically to gamers or if you want to focus it towards AI heavily or rendering, the, the needs and configurations is going to be a slightly different from one another. So basically build towards the service you're wanting to provide, basically. If that's Got it. one of my recommendations. Um, yeah, so it sounds no, like... Yeah. So it sounds like based off of what I've heard here uh, and then what I've heard elsewhere too is like, you know, a lot of these customers, you know, AI is definitely one of them, big one there in that regard. Whatever industry that is, is definitely around AI. Um, rendering has been mentioned, I've heard. Um, simulations with if it's medical on the medical side of things or just overall simulations in general, um, which I think are super beneficial there. I've heard things like folding and things like that. Like, so um, are those all situations where you think Flux is proof of useful work is very much catered towards all of these different types of industries. Yeah, exactly. Uh, basically, every type of use case, even in the AI use case, there's a lot of like different paths you can go with. Other classification, uh, NLP, transformers. Transformers is what's being used with ChatGPT, basically. I okay. did a study on that in 2018 for my paper. Uh, wow. Real intrinsic and stuff, but uh, very memory demanding uh, use case. Okay. So as a GPU miner, I'm a GPU miner, most of my community is, how is Flux proof of useful work beneficial to me as a home miner? So basically what you, you want to uh, shift towards something that you have your GPU running right now, your mining rig whatsoever, uh, and there's a job for you. Basically there's a job that someone wants to run out your machine that the, the service you're providing appeals to them for their use case. So you sign up for proof of use work, proof of use work. Um, someone wants to rent your machine. It's more profitable than mining. If you check the, um, like for example, a couple of alternatives going through Vast AI or mm -hmm. AWS, the pricing is gonna be very different than what you're getting for mining especially around those 28 cents an hour, unlike those okay. 28 cents a day, that's something you're gonna be more aimed towards forward to. I can't go much more into the pricing because we- No, that's fine. This. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. Sounds Just good. Just so, yeah. So absolutely. So uh, it sounds like that the reward as a GPU miner, you know, comes from pivoting off of what we're mining. When we go over to proof useful work, we're then rewarded. It sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that that reward can be very different based off of the job, uh, the task, the requirements, things like that. Is that accurate? Exactly. And your okay. machine is basically also uh, rigged towards, um, depending on the use case you'll be providing, you're either get more or less, depending on the score you achieve for each and single different use case you have. Uh, this can be compared as kind of like when dual mining, uh, I think it was uh, Ethereum and Zilliqa at some point, mm -hmm. it was switching to Zilliqa and then back to Ethereum yep. at some point. So you can see it that way as well. Okay, good to know. So my understanding with the Flux Proof of Useful Work OS, let's say, so right now uh, there's an app that you'll run on Windows that you'll go ahead and queue up. And then there's also going to be something along the lines of a Linux boot that you would plug into a machine, you'd boot it up, it boots in that environment, and then you use like a control panel, very similar to HiveOS. You use a control panel to manage things. Does that sound accurate as of today? Yeah. Okay, but Basically, uh, we, we tried to build it for both uh, operating systems because basically what we have actually at the universities is already a service that's running, uh, a server mm -hmm. that's being shared among peoples, and we don't want to reinstall like a whole OS on top of it to be able to share these. It's more simple, it's more, well, I'd say user friendly and yeah. don't need to go through the hassle of like reinstalling a whole OS and configuring permissions for every single user you have. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, especially for those individuals that are like, you know, you want that barrier to entry for your, for your, for your entry level individuals, like a gaming rig that you, you know, you're going to be overnight. You just go ahead and load up the app, turn it on and, and great. You know, you can kind of go that way or you have a rig dedicated and then you could either go the Windows route with the app or you could go with the, the Linux OS boot um, that is available there, which is good to know. So after we've gone ahead and we got the OS up, bam, we're good to go. Um, you know, let's talk about benchmarking because that's been a big buzzword around Flux Proof of Useful Work. So can you explain exactly how this benchmark tool will work and what exactly it's actually looking for? So it'll basically look for the service you're providing in terms of depending on to the use case, for example, maybe for gaming, you'll want low latency so or fast connection speed. So that will be 
a higher criteria or higher weighted uh, feature for uh, the gaming aspect. But every benchmark will be specific to the use case, basically. So you, you'll be running a benchmark and it will take every single metric it needs to basically calculate the score that defines mm -hmm. the machine for its use case. Okay. That makes sense. So if you're running, let's say you're, you're I'm just throwing a, an idea out there. You know, you have your, your gaming rig um, and it's set up good yeah. to go. So it's going to benchmark CPU, memory, hard drive, GPU, you know, processor. It's going to look at all of those and then give it a score and go from there. So what if you are on the flip side and you just had a, like a, a motherboard with a beefy CPU, no GPU or anything like that, will it still utilize your machine and just on that CPU? Or do you need to have all of those other components in order to participate? Well, it basically depends basic, uh, on what you want to do with it, but okay. you could you could participate to it, but you won't have the computational power similar to G, uh, CPUs and GPUs because those do Got different it. things. Mm -hmm. uh, basically parallels eyes, uh, calculations compared to okay. like like more sequence makes sense so you're definitely it's definitely going to be beneficial to have a whole rig ready to go you know that has all those components in it um yeah. versus just one-offs okay that makes a lot of sense so talking you about run those yeah okay perfect so talking about gpus with flux is proof of useful work side so uh, based off what, what we've seen so far when it comes down to like memory and everything based off of the details you guys released the other day you know, the VRAM on your GPU is going to be a big, it's going to be weighted pretty heavily. Is that accurate? For AI benchmarks, yes. Uh, well, it, it will depend on the models you'll be running. Uh, if it's okay. language-based models and so on, it's going to require to load more onto the memory, uh, as well as the data sets and the batch you want to like fit on there. So the more memory you have, the more you can fit on it, but it's not always the best use case for the task. So it really depends on the use case. It's I insist on this. It will really depend on the use case and the client you're targeting to. Okay. So a based off of your testing, what you guys have seen so far, um, where would what GPU do you guys find to be like middle of the road for Flux Proof of Useful Work? Like if there was one GPU that was like, this guy's kind of the middle, uh, what GPU would stand out to you based off of your testing? Um, I can't really give uh, enough data about this right now. Okay. But okay. it, it is really heavily dependent on the use case, as I said. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. That's fine. Sounds good. So yep. talking about motherboards, let's kind of pivot here, talk about motherboards a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about, uh, let's talk about memory there too. With GPUs, everything I've read so far said about, yeah, take your VRAM and add about 25% uh, memory in order for it. So yep. if it's, you know, 10, you know, you might want, uh, if the VRAM is 10, you might want 12 or whatnot. Um, is that 25% more like a conservative low number or no, like 25% is, is right in that happy place? Uh, it's conservative low. What we have, for okay. example, in university, it's four times the amount of uh, RAM times. compared to the VRAM. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah. So the, mo the more RAM you can provide to these th the rigs, the better it sounds like, uh, which is yeah. great. Um, it's definitely good to know. So talking about motherboards then. Um, not any old motherboard can specifically work because you're going to have some PCI slot requirements. Can you give us some more details on that? So for the first piece for the motherboard, that's really important to look at more than even PCI is actually virtualization. So you need to have VTD or AMD virtualization enabled for the okay. GPU on top of the CPU. So wow. if, if you can't have that through, basically you can't virtualize the environment for the GPU and pass it through. Oh, interesting so that's, so that's really what you hmm, want to look okay. at first yeah and then after that you want some pcie lanes that are not uh, basically 1x or 4x uh, if you want to do ai the i'd say 8 8x is good uh, gen 3 possibly or more um but yeah so 16 would be ideal you know, like in a 16 yeah. slot is ideal, but an eight will, will do the trick. But all of those things are determined through throughput. You know, your X16 versus yeah. X8 is definitely different. So the more throughput, the better. So ideally for us, GPU miners thinking this through, X16 would be ideal, uh, especially as you had said, when it comes down to like AI and rendering and such, such like that. Well, so we talk to, to find the, the perfect balance, right? So yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So talking about motherboards there, we talked a little bit about PCI slot, CPU, processor a little bit. 
Um, based off of your testing, you know, especially those university ones, which seem to be your big guinea pigs, which is great. Um, does, and you, and this may come down to just the job and the task, is there a benefit for the CPUs to be i9s or Ryzen 3, 3000 or 5000 series? Or does like a Xenon processor that has more cores, it, does one do better than the other based off of your testing so far? Uh, not really. I haven't dove okay. much deeper into that, but I okay. don't find much of a difference. Oh, okay, great. Sounds good. Yeah. I like it. The reason I ask is I'm in the process of building out one of my rigs and yeah. Xenon processors are super cheap, which is awesome. Uh, I think I got mine for like 22 bucks and they're like 14 cores. So I'm like, heck yeah. Uh, but I guess, as you said, you have to make sure that your rig handles virtualization. It's got to be able to, to, yeah. to, to do that in order to participate. Yeah. So um, that is definitely good to know. So pivoting back to memory, I was just looking at my notes here. Does memory timing or like that CL... Does that does that factor into much with this or not necessarily? I uh, can't really provide much information on this piece. There's still okay. a lot of testing going on, but yeah. Okay. So uh, what's next for your team? You know, what's what's the next stepping stone or barrier that the Flux Proof of Useful Work team uh, needs to cross at this point? Oh, well, well, the first barrier is, I won't say barrier, but basically the first big milestone would be the release of the benchmarking piece. And okay. the demonstration at, uh, I think it's the mining event in Florida. Correct. So you're talking about the mining disrupt yeah. event in July. Yeah, awesome. Exactly. Cool. So so for my community, the big thing is, hey, make sure we're tuning in for mining disrupt to check out, you know, that big uh, details. Um, you know, I've heard that as well, that the benchmark tool will be available to start to give us as g miners the ability to kind of gauge where a hardware is, how it's going to do, things like that. Uh, now, the benchmarking tool as you, I, I want to put it out there, I assume doesn't, won't give you profitability numbers because at the end of the day, that's going to come down to the job and the, the initial demand. The benchmark's really just going to tell you how it scores and where it's doing better or where you need to replace hardware and such. Is that accurate? Yeah, exactly. And you'll also be able to compare yourself among others uh, ah, to okay. see where you, you fit, right? I got it. I got it. So as long so, as so it helps for, okay, it helps for us and for you guys as well uh, to basically identify where you would fit best for that use case mm. well you get to see like a leaderboard and like who's like higher and stuff that's cool that's cool mm -hmm. so as long as i'm beating hawk crypto mining when it comes down to like benchmarks i'm good you know my my job is done uh which is which is fantastic so alex i gotta be honest i appreciate you joining me today uh 15 minutes flew by we're almost at 20 minutes already you answered a boatload of questions i'm hoping that everything you brought to the table answers a lot of questions out there for my community regarding I get a lot. What is proof, you know, flux proof of useful work? And I think you, you definitely nailed that. Uh, I'm excited. So mining disrupt coming up next month. Uh, I think it's the end of July. We'll look for that benchmarking tool and uh, yeah, fantastic. So thank you, Alex, very much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Bye.